early on what meetings are essential to the monitoring process. All your stakeholders will expect to receive reports at regular intervals whether formally or informally. So you need to ask yourself, who needs to be informed? About what? How often? By what means? Effective communication involves giving information, collecting information, and listening to people. To ensure the smooth running of your project, you might need any or all of the following. Formal minutes meetings which probably run to a schedule which is outside your control. Meetings with your sponsor which might be on a one-to-one -one basis. Progress meetings with a project team. Individual meetings on a one-to-one -one basis with team members. Ad hoc problem-solving meetings when particular issues need to be resolved. Meetings need a clear purpose and focus and they should be recorded on project schedules. They should be time-limited and given proper priority in diaries so that time is not wasted by waiting for inputs from key people. Meetings will only be respected if they are managed to avoid wasting time and effort. Monitoring is also concerned with achieving a balance of the three dimensions of the project. Cost, that is, the resources available. Time, that is, the schedule. Quality, that is, the scope and appropriateness of the outputs or outcomes. Many of the difficulties in implementing a project are caused by poor time management. This will have a direct effect on the costs of the project as well as on the quality of what is achieved. So, there need to be systems for monitoring. The time spent on project asks. The resources used, that is, people, materials, and equipment. Compliance with applicable quality standards. There are a number of options for how you might take action to maintain this balance and these are splitting the key stages to avoid each following another when there is no necessity to have one in place before the next making savings by removing or reducing contingencies from estimates reevaluating the dependencies in the logic diagram you may have been overcautious in making the first judgments about the sequence of activities. As some outcomes are achieved, you may find that you can avoid some of the dependencies. You may find that you can make more use of slack time to speed up completion of tasks. Avoiding duplication of effort. If you can minimize duplication, you can make savings of time and effort. Gantt charts and critical path diagrams are useful for tracking project activity and for making necessary changes to the project plan. Sometimes an addition or change to the project will be requested. Controlling changes to the project will help to maintain good relations with your client and to protect your profit margin and budget for resources. The first step is to assess the extent to which this will cause a need for additional time or resources. Perhaps the change can be accommodated in the project plan within the existing time scale and budget, for example, by altering some of the tasks in the later stages. Once the implications for time and cost of the requested change are known, you can decide how to respond to the client. However, you may want to negotiate with the client to achieve a solution that suits both of you, again, with full understanding of the implications. Whatever is decided, you will need to be fully informed of the cost and time implications of the proposed change before you enter discussions about how it could be managed. A quote says that communication on project work is the glue that holds everything together. The success of a project is principally determined by its stakeholders, including sponsors and project team, and you can only know 
how you are doing by keeping channels of communication open. Some of the issues involved in communicating with all people involved with the project starting from its launch are as follows. Introducing the project team and their roles. Explaining the benefits of the project and its anticipated outputs and outcomes. Describing the project plan. Setting the ground rules for communication. Responding to questions. Launching the project also allows you to set the tone of communications during the event. You may arrange to be formal or informal, accessible or distant. However, you present yourself and the event will set the pattern for future communications. In project management, the quality of communication can make the difference between achieving your objectives and falling short of them. Projects often fail not because of problems with the work itself but because the people involved are not working together effectively. Project managers communicate in diverse ways. Face-to-face -face or by telephone in written and electronic forms through presentations and reports. The purpose of communication is primarily to explain to others what has been achieved so far and what remains to be completed and to listen and respond to the needs and views of others concerned with the project. Effective team working in a multidisciplinary context can be hindered by lack of understanding of each other's roles. It is inevitable that conflict will develop at some stage in any project team composed of people with different personalities, backgrounds, experiences, and specialist skills. Interpersonal conflict may arise where people do not want to get along because of different specialisms, racial prejudices, ethics, morals, etc. Typical causes of conflict include breakdown in communications, conflicting objectives, and lack of trust. Ambition, jealousy, and simply the wrong chemistry are not unusual. There is often fear of change or of exposure of some inadequacy or of failure. However, conflict can be healthy to the success of the project team, provided that it teaches everyone something about how to deal with and participate in resolution of the conflict. To manage conflict, look at all the communication channels and human interfaces to identify conflict risks. It can help to hold a risk identification workshop or to carry out team building by openly declaring risks. Risks by themselves will not disappear. You should devise a risk mitigation plan to deal with identified risks in a controlled way by being proactive. The alert project manager can develop a behavior influence strategy whereby he will encourage team members to say good things about each other. Also, project managers need to encourage team members to exchange favors, smaller ones first, larger ones later, once trust and good relationships have been established. Projects are high-risk activities, and it is in the early stages that uncertainty is greatest. When monitoring project risks and adjusting activities, you need to pay particular attention to tasks inside key stages, points at which several people are involved in one task, tasks following a merge in the logic diagram, key stages or tasks which will take a long time to complete, the relationship between each key stage and the next, any point at which the people involved are doing a task for the first time. Tasks involving the new or unfamiliar technology. Key stages where there is very little or no slack or float in the schedule. When a risk becomes reality, its implications must be assessed, including the effect on costs and resources. Possible consequences if the problem is not addressed. Which aspects of the project are affected. How serious 
the problem is thought to be. Depending on the reporting arrangements you have in place, you may need to notify your sponsors of any problems immediately. It is more likely, however, that you would want to identify possible solutions first so that you can make recommendations for action at the same time. Involving the whole team in the problem-solving process shows that you value their experience and knowledge in devising a solution. Problem-solving can be broken down into a series of steps as shown in the figure. It starts by defining the problem. It is vital that the problem is identified correctly. If the risk management system is working properly, the problem should not have hit you completely out of the blue and you should already have some idea what it is about. Identifying possible causes. The possible causes of a problem can be written in the form of a fishbone diagram. This can be a useful method to help a group to examine causes of problems and perhaps also to clarify your own thoughts. A link to the sample of a fishbone diagram is found on the page. Restating the problem. If your analysis of the problem and its possible causes is complete, it should enable you to rewrite the problem statement to include the causes. If you can clarify your objective by defining a desired end state, you are more likely to produce a good solution. Collecting possible solutions. It involves breaking the mindset within which situations are normally interpreted. Choosing the best option. When you have collected a broad range of options, each possible solution should be assessed for its feasibility. Appraise the possible consequences of implementing each of these against your criteria for cost, time, and quality. Getting agreement to the chosen solution. Depending on your reporting arrangements and the severity of the problem, you may then need to prepare a formal report with recommendations for action and take it to the project sponsor for agreement. Implementing the solution. Observation of what is happening should enable you to monitor how the recommended actions are being carried out.